Alrighty guys, this is Green Avenger, so for today I'm going to be going over a few of my decks in the Master Duels. First off, I'm going to showcase and explain my version of a Speedroids deck through trial and error. But before I even get started on that, I want to introduce myself. So I'm going to be doing recordings for my YouTube channel. My YouTube name's going to be X. Green, G R E E N, capital A, lowercase v e a n, G E R, capital X. Again, that's X Green Avenger X. That's going to be my YouTube channel. So basically, I'm going to make mine a family friendly, where everybody can come along streaming channel where you can see all your videos and watch them. Basically, I stream everything except sports games. Uh, on my PC for my YouTube for now, generally I'm going to stick to games like either Roblox when I'm streaming with my kids, or I'm going to be streaming Master Dose, Pokemon Trading Carding, Card Game, and eventually once I get the relearned uh, new version of Magic the Gathering, I'm going to stream that as well. So, a little bit about me. I actually have a slogan because I believe in spreading smiles even if it's one a day for entertainment that still means I've made my mission uh, I'm not doing this for money but if I do end up making it like that one day that'll make me happy but anybody who tunes in always and for future reference I thank you for giving your time because you could be doing anything with that so again it's gonna be family friendly channel uh, gonna be streaming that mainly for now on the PC I'll be doing stuff like Yu-Gi-Oh! I'll be doing Pokemon Trading Card Game and Roblox. Um, as far as my other streaming thing, I do that at least five days a week on my mobile phone. I do uh, Omelet Arcade is the app. You can watch me on there. Same handle, X Green Avenger X. But let's get into today. So for today, I'm going to start by showing my version of a Speedroids deck and explain why I like this deck. So I actually grew to love this deck from watching Arc V. Uh, watching, I can actually do impressions of the gut who does the Speedroids uh, deck and voicing. When I get caught up in Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm actually, you can't see it because my camera's off. I'm wearing a Millennium Puzzle with my Obelisk to Tormentor lanyard right now. So for starters, Speedroid deck, I love it. Very versatile, the extra deck especially. Now, keep in mind, everybody has their own version of the deck. So for mine, I'm gonna start by explaining a few key cards and why I enjoy it. Then I'll go into the extra deck combos and why I like that. So first off, Speedroid Red Eye Dice is an essential card for your Speedroid deck because it allows you to change the level of your Speedroid monsters anywhere from a 1 all the way to a 6. That means you can basically synchro summon anything that's level 2 or up to level 7. It's amazing. Uh, one thing you can do to combine to make this card more efficient, you can combine it with this spell card 1 for 1 where basically you send a monster from your hand to the graveyard and you can special summon a level one. Because the thing you have to know about speedroids, a lot of their abilities only trigger once a turn. So once you use it, it's done for that turn. That's why you have to read the text. There's a few select cards that you can trigger the abilities multiple times in a turn. And another thing I love about the speedroids, even when they're in the graveyard, a few of these cards I'm going to go over have a very essential effect that helps you whenever you're breaking two for getting cards you need special summon to pull off your synchro summons. So again, Speedroid, Red Eye Dice, very essential. I run three because, like I said, I use it for all my synchro summon combos. So Speedroid Marble Machine is nice. It is a pendulum monster if you ever run a pendulum deck, and it does have a decent pendulum effect if you run any other like if you combine the other speedboy pendulum monsters in there i don't really ever use it for the pendulum purpose i actually use it so i can search my deck 
when it's played as a normal summon. Now, that's when it's normal summon. You have to read really closely with speedroids, because I still make mistakes even though I've been running this deck. And like I said, I love the speedroid. It forces people to get rid of their Ash Blossoms. When people max see, I've even decked them out before from special summon, because you can special summon a lot speedroid. But the main fact that I use for him is to actually pull another speedroid. It's any speedroid for my deck to add to it because a lot of them you can special summon right from your hand or from the graveyard so now terra top there's a reason they limited that bad boy to one because uh true story me and my son were playing tabletop and uh i saw they were selling the uh speedroid pack still so i bought those so i could build a speedroid deck didn't know at the time that it was limited to one and then i figured out really fast why because these are crazy if you have no monsters you can special summon this from your hand now his ability can only be triggered once a turn but you can search your deck for a speedroid monster and add it to your hand now you can trigger this ability by special summon or normal summon so Say it's the next turn and he's in the grave. You can pull him from the grave with a card and still trigger his ability. It's excellent for searching your deck. That's why I love the speed roids. Versatility and search and destroy. So this card is really nice. You can only use its effect once again, but it can be normal summon or special summon to trigger it. And if you have no monsters, you can special summon this bad boy on the field for a search. So if you have it in your first turn hand, you're set, you're good, you can start the combos. Now, another essential. Speedroid Taki Tomborg. Love this card. This card has got me out of so many pinches. Now, the beauty of this one is if you control any wind monster, you can special summon this from your hand. That's not the best part though. It's not a tuner yet, but you combine it with its special ability to tribute it to special summon any one Speedroid tuner from your deck. I bet you can guess which one I normally choose. Using his ability, you can get any speed roid tuner from your deck and special summon it to the field. Now remember, it's once a turn, and it once you use it, you can't use it again for that turn. And it's any tuner, so that's the beauty of it. But the only thing is, if you're running a deck with monsters that don't have that aren't wind monsters, you can't trigger effects of other monsters that turn when you use pretty much any speed roar ability once you trigger it you can't use abilities of anything that's not a wind monster so kind of tone it down to a wind monster deck but i use it to usually pull out my speed roid because speed roid changes level can get me basically any secret summon monster i need from two to seven so now speed roid din din daiko doesn't seem like a good card on its own but when it's in the graveyard, it really steps up its game because you can remove that and one other uh, speed roid from your, I believe you banish this card from the graveyard and one other speed roid card. And you can special summon another tuner, either from your hand or your graveyard. Really good for comboing to get the big boss monsters that are like 10 and up. Especially if you're running a uh, deck and it has the... Uh, this bad boy right here, the Baron de Fleur. I probably butchered that because I don't speak French fluently. But yeah, this bad boy, I combine him with Foolish Burial, or I even use my one for one if he's in my hand to send him there because I can get a Speedroid uh, Red Eye Dice out, or, and still I can special summon another tuner from my graveyard. So that's a good card to have in there. Speedroid Car Turbo has two good effects I'm going to go over. So if you control a wind monster, any wind monster, that's why I said limit the wind monsters if you build speedroids for the best effects. You special summon this. Now this is a level 3 tuner. On its own, it's okay. But again, speedroids are beautiful because removing them from play in the graveyard gives you a huge benefit. So this one's a level 3 tuner. It can help you in a pinch to synchro summon a monster if you need it. And once it's in the graveyard, in the same turn, you can remove it from the graveyard, boost all of your wind monsters by 800 attack. So with this card in particular, I love to combine him with this synchro monster, my high speed roid Chambara. 
Because with Chambara, you boost its attack up by 800. Then when it attacks, it gets an extra 200 that's permanent. And then it gets a second attack. So that's 400 extra attack. And even when your attack goes back down, you'll get to keep the 400, but not the 800. But it's still a nice thing. And then another thing is if this card sent to the graveyard, you can target target one of your banished speedboard cards and add it back to your hand. So one of the ones you use to banish to get it possibly, when he goes to the graveyard, boom, pull him back, and you got another combo right there. So speedboard double yo-yo goes without saying. It's good. Make sure you read your cards though. This card only went normal summon. You can target a level 3 or lower speedroid monster in your graveyard. So generally I combine him with my red eye dice when it's in the graveyard. Or if I have my speedroid terror top, I pull it out because again it's not a tuner and neither is double yo-yo. But if it's not the same turn you already use this ability, you can pull the speedroid terror top out and actually allow yourself to search your deck for another speed roid. So very useful all around the board to have a double yo-yo. I run two because when I get to my extra deck, I'm going to explain why. Everybody has their own style and I respect theirs, but this is my version of it. And it's been pretty good to me. It's got me to gold. I just haven't really been playing ranked since the event. I've been trying to balance my time. Now, high speed roid horse stilts. I love this card. If he's in your first hand, Again, a lot of my combos revolve around Red Eye Dice. And another thing I love is since a lot of the Speedboard monsters have 1500 or less attack, things like Trap Hole cards that trigger aren't really going to hurt me as much. Just Ash Blossom's the worst thing, but Speedroids are known for super special summoning the whole field. So basically you're baiting out and forcing your opponent to have to choose whether to use your Maxis or whether to use their Ash Blossoms. Or there's like some zombie card now people are using that's a hand trap that negates uh, monster effects too. But it baits out all that because I've run into a lot of top tier players that are running some of these cards, multiple copies of it. And it can get frustrating and discouraging, but don't let it discourage you. So as I was going over speedroid stilts, you can special summon one level four or lower speedroid monster. So any level four or lower, it goes really good. Again, combination. I usually combine him with either Terra Top if he's in my hand. I will combine it with my Speedward Red Eye Dice as a combo. Even Taki Tomber, but I mean, again, you can special summon him from your hand if you have a wind monster. So you benefit no matter what. Uh, or even this card right here, which I'm going to get down to later on, because this one, it triggers an ability whether it's normal summon or special summon once a turn. Also, a deck searcher makes it very fluent. I'm going to do a match when I get done explaining, showing you in ranked how mine plays. Whether I win or lose is fine. I just want to show you a version of mine, how I pilot it. So, Speedroid Horse Stilts has a very nice ability when in the graveyard. You can't do it the same turn it goes to the graveyard, but the next turn, you can banish it, and then you can send one min monster from your deck to the graveyard. Bet you can guess what card I usually send. My Dan Dan Daiko for a special summon if I haven't already put another one in the graveyard. Just another easy way to get cards out. So this one, I feel like people sleep on the Speedroid block and roll reason I say that is because, I mean, at first when you read it, it doesn't seem useful. I mean, it's got a decent defense for four star, but this one is beautiful. I love this because the trick to this one, if you use this as a synchro material, whatever the level of the synchro summon monster that you summon comes out, the token comes out. So you still get a free monster that you can use and combine. You can use it with a link summon or you can use it to uh, use as a bait for one of your higher level uh, synchro summons as well. I love this. I always have one in my deck just for that because it's a free monster to use to get out even more than I need. So either way. So I love Fuki Madoshi Piper and I'm going to tell you why. It's a level four tuner first off. So, I'm going to tell you later on when I go over my tuners why I love this one. First off, when this one's normal or special summon, you can excavate cards from the top of your deck 
equal to the amount of wind monsters you control. So if you have four wind monsters on the field, you get to check four cards, take one, add it to your hand, put the rest back into your deck and shuffle. And that's if you normal summon or special summon. So if you pull that out the graveyard, same thing. It's normal or special summon. Now, it does only work one time per turn. But, again, it's a search card. It's very useful, especially since Speed Road, you can have five wind monsters in one turn easily. It has a banish effect that I really enjoy. So if you have a high level uh, synchro monster that's like a 10 or something and you're just trying to get out your 11 or 12, you can use this one to reduce one monster on the field that you control by two levels. It's a permanent two level knockdown, so keep that in mind, it's permanent. But you can use it to get out other monsters you want. For me, with my Baron de Fleur, what I'll do is whenever I have it out on the field, if I first I'll use its ability to blow up a card on the field or remove a card off the field by destruction. Then, if they're gonna try to trigger something, I'll negate it in the same turn to stop it. Then what I'll do is I'll kick back the level with that by two and use one of my lower tuners to get out a boss monster like my high speed roid clear ring rider. So for my deck, my high speed roids is about special summons, negates, and forcing your opponent to basically throw away all of its good cards. Without, because a lot of people don't run into speed roids. I barely run into them. I mean, if you're one of the people that, you know, you have your engine, you use the two or three uh, max C's or the negate hand traps or effect fail or whatever, that's cool too. But remember, Best works with wind monsters. My whole deck is wind monsters. I didn't play around. Now, I tested this tons and tons again, so I'm going to go over some of the spells and traps that matter. As I said, Foolish Burial is very useful for this deck for sending some of the cards with the graveyard removal, even whether it's the power boost, which would be Speedroid Car Turbo, or Speedroid Horse Stilts on the next turn if you need something, or... Again, Din Din Daiko, because that's a free removal and special summon of a tuner if you have one in your graveyard or your hand. I already went over one for one. Very useful for getting out the red eye dice. Definitely needed for that. So, I only run one speed recovery. You can run two or three. It's nice because you can special summon any... That's the key. Any speedroid monster that you synchro summon. That's a speedroid, even if it's uh, one of your effect ones as well. You can use this to special summon it. So, really helpful, because it's any speed roid. And it's not like if the card gets destroyed, the monster goes away. No, the monster's on the field unless it gets negated during a summon. And then, during your main phase, you can, but not the same turn, the next turn, you can banish this card to get a speed roid out of your graveyard. So see what I'm saying? It's about recycling strategically what you need and what you don't need. Now, I run two of these speed roid scratches. Why? Because again, depending, this allows me to search my deck for any speed roid I need in order to implement my strategy. So if I wanted to special summon like four or five times, I could send a Din Din Daiko, or I could send a Red Eye Dice if I had the Yo Yo to get him out of the grave. You see, it's kind of, it's a versatile swap out of what I need. I only have one speed lift in my deck because really, I already set my deck up to special summon out the wazoo if I need it. I've got it set up. What this one does, it allows you, if you already have a tuner, you can special summon any one monster that's level 4 or lower speed roid from your deck. So if you're still struggling, you shouldn't really brick with this deck is my point, the way I have it set up. The occasional time you'll brick and that's only if someone hand negates everything you do. I've even done decent, it's like, I'd say now it's like 60% against flu decks I win. but. Neither player can activate cards or effects when that monster is special summoned, so it cannot be negated, basically, when you play this. You can't activate the effects. It stops it while it's being special summoned. It's beautiful. I love it. It's a good card when you're backed into a corner. So, this one is more of a chance card. You never know what you're going to get, but as a quick play, say you're, you need a damage sponge. Flip it on your turn as long as it doesn't get negated. If you roll a six, you're set, because you can pull up the two monsters that equal the total, or one monster that equals the total level. The only thing is, 
make sure you read the cards. This negates the effects of the monster. So red eye dice, unless you have a level two monster or something useful, it's tricky with that one. But even if you roll a one and you got a red eye dice, you're not screwed. If you roll a six, you're excellent. Pete, there's people who use level five monsters too. I don't. I just kind of keep it limited to the fours and lower, just for my strategy. Um, so this one is only bad if you do not special summon the monster that turn like if you choose not to special summon you use life points but i don't know why you would choose not to special summon that's kind of crazy so in a deck that's built around special summoning i would not want to take the life point hit if you roll a six just saying so i only have torrential tribute I call this my uh, kamikaze card. It's worst case scenario if no one is really paying attention to my back row and I'm backed into a corner, I'll activate that and board wipe unless someone has a cannot be destroyed or targeted. It works against cannot be targeted, but not cannot be destroyed. Mirror Force is just in there because, I mean, not everybody really thinks about that. I have Bottomless Trap Hole for when someone summons a monster with 1500 or more attack. The only thing is it destroys, then banishes. It doesn't remove it. Destroys, then banishes. So if it says cannot be destroyed, don't activate that. I run one floodgate just to stop any abilities that someone's trying to run on me. Uh, Lost Wind, now, I wish my other video wouldn't have messed up with the audio because I was explaining. This is a card, it's a rare. It's really easy to get rare shards and master goals, honestly through grinding and uh, cards whenever you're buying packs. Lost win, buy three just in case for a deck, because this one, whew, never underestimate this card. Any special summon monster on the field, whether it's hand, deck, extra deck, graveyard, doesn't matter. Even if it's returned from being removed, the special summon. You activate this, the attack is halved, and the effect is negated, and it's permanent. It's not just a one-turn thing. It's permanent when you do that. It's a two-for-one deal, too, because if they special summon another monster from their extra deck, while well, that's in your graveyard, in other words, you're using that turn and they special summon from their extra deck, it adds it right back for you to use again, but it disappears once you use it. Two-for-one, one and done is not the case with this. Very good. I've seen a lot of people running Lost Win lately, and it's really good against the flu decks. Trust me. Some of the flu monsters they special summon, but a lot of them they normal summon. I usually don't use it against the flu just because, like I said, a lot of normal summons, but there's that one time they're going to special summon something, and then bam, there you go. Stop it in tracks. So, now. I have a Speed Boy Duplicate. It's pretty decent. Again, all win deck for me is why I run one. Now, this card, pay attention to the context because this one can only be used once per a duel. So do not mistake in that. If you have multiples in your deck, it's a waste. Put one because if it gets negated, then it's not that serious. But you banish one win monster from the graveyard, you get to target one card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. So those cannot be destroyed. As long as it doesn't say cannot be targeted, boom. You got a backup plan. You just put that sucker back in their hand. Works pretty decent against uh, Eldritch decks, too, as a combo. And then it has a second effect. If the card's in the graveyard, you can target a level 2 or higher speed board you control and reduce its level by 1. So it's 2 or higher. So basically anything except the red eye dice, you can reduce its level by one, so you can kind of like adjust the versatility of a Synchro Summon while adding this onto the field as a tutor as well to get another monster. So people who run like Stardust, he's a win Synchro Monster, don't sleep on that either. I didn't do that yet, but I do have a Stardust Charger in there to stop Special Summons once a turn, so I mean, win monsters are not something you sleep on, they can shut you down really quick. All right, so otherwise, uh, since my deck really is around special summons to get what I need, I have two Call of the Hornets for my Synchros in case they don't remove it, I can bring it back and use it to my advantage. This card, don't sleep on this one. Pennant of Revolution is beautiful. This one is good if you have a Synchro monster and you're battling another monster. I'll tell you why. 
Because first off, if another card you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add the Liberty at Last, which Liberty at Last is a decent trap. If, if a monster of yours gets destroyed with that card, you can send two cards from the opponent's uh, field back to their hand when your monster's destroyed. So it's got a really three good effects. You can search for it if you're running Liberty at Last. So at the start of the damage step, not during or in the middle or the end, at the start of it, if a synchro monster battles a monster, you can destroy that opponent's battling monster. As long as it doesn't say cannot be targeted by effects and cannot be affected by effects, then you can destroy it at the beginning of the battle phase, no questions asked. So really good to have that card. And then, if this card would be destroyed, you can destroy one monster you control instead to keep it. So, basically, as long as they don't remove it from the field or banish it, they're in trouble. So, last but not least, I'm going to go over a few other cards. So, Red Eye Dice has one main purpose in my deck. To knock a monster who's a non-tuner to two so that I can special summon this. Now, keep in mind, if you're running this particular level two monster... The Speedroid Marble Machine, if you're running that, do not, under any circumstance, Synchro Summon with that unless it's a last case backed in the wall because it is a Pendulum. So if you Synchro Summon with it, it does not go into the graveyard. It goes back into the extra deck. So you can't trigger the ability I do with it. So with this particular card, you're going to want to always use a monster that's not a Pendulum to synchro summon it out because I always I never really use the add one speed board unless my fields already set up nicely because this effect is really nice if all materials used for it were speed board monsters and are in the graveyard special summon so you special summon it with a tuner and an effect monster you get those two speed board monsters right back then you can eat if it's red eye dice you use you can trigger red eye dice's effect to boost the monster that comes back out again to make a more powerful synchro monster and see the beauty of this one don't sleep on it please pay attention to your text this is a tuner synchro so i cannot tell you how many times it's got my boss monster set in place it's beautiful to have high speed broid cork shooter that thing will bail you out and give you a nice little thing not to mention if someone's using maxi it's pretty nasty they're about to lose gain three cards but lose three from their deck just from that combo so yeah that's i only have one of these high speed boy chambara as i went over already only main thing with this one is if it dies it goes to the graveyard you can add a banished one but it gets 200 permanent attack each time it attacks and can attack twice in a battle phase so i had to have him in there so high speed roid hagoida I've barely used it, but again, this is about manipulating the levels to get stronger monsters. And if you have a, when you use his ability, it goes to the grave, you can add it back if you have another speed roy tuner monster. Add it back on the field, and you can still get an extra synchro summon and an adjusted level. And it only works with wind monsters, so I say only run wind monsters with this deck that I built. So, most people didn't think of this. I thought of this for my particular deck. I had a level six, and I stumbled on this on accident when I was searching my synchro monsters I got in a pack. So Virtual World Beast Juju is really nice. It's a wind monster, so it's not gonna get in the way. So this one is nice because it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects while you have two or more monsters in your graveyard with the same original type and attribute, but different names. So basically in a speedroid deck, if you use red eye dice and one other and change this level to five, you already it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. So you can slap it in defense as long as you don't keep removing cards from your field or graveyard, it won't be able to be destroyed, only removed, because it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Now it has a beautiful effect though, but it's also a double dagger if you don't pay attention to the monsters you're removing. You can banish two monsters from the graveyard with the same original type and attribute. So if you're running wind and they're speedroid, you're set with this ability. You target one card on the field. This is why I love this one. Even though it's a target, if it's a monster that can be targeted, you're sending a card to the graveyard. You are not destroying it. You're sending it to the graveyard. So it's an automatic if they says cannot be destroyed but doesn't have cannot be targeted, easily remove two and you can use this effect i believe hold on one card 
Yes, that was really good. Okay, so you can use the effect once per turn, but it's nice for the monsters that say can't be uh, destroyed because you're not destroying, you're sending them. I love having Virtual World Beast Juju in my deck. He's bailed me out so many times that when I get stuck with them with a powerful monster with no pierce, they can't touch me unless they remove it or have pierce damage. They cannot hurt me. So I run two clear wing synchro level sevens. This one is beneficial for people who run like the. Uh, an Eldritch or something, or something that's level 5 or higher, trigger special abilities. You can negate it and gain the power. This one has two abilities that can be triggered in turn. So, if you're targeted, if something targets you that's level 5 or higher, you can negate it. You can negate the activation, destroy it, and gain the attack. Then also, whenever monster that special summon activates its effect is level 5 or higher, you can negate it and gain its power for that turn. This one, this one is right here. Hold on, let me see. Where's my other one? Oh, it's right here. It's because it's a pendulum too. Sorry, I couldn't find it. This one is decent. Uh, I mean, because even if you use its ability where it gets added to the pendulum zone, it still has a nice little drop in. Hey, can you stop the puppy from doing that? Please? Alright. So this one, right here, if a monster is, it says you can target one face-up monster that's been special summoned from the extra deck. So Link Summoners and people who run a lot of fusion and stuff, this is an automatic shutdown right there. Easily fixable. I'll be right back, guys. All right, sorry about that. I had to take a quick brief recess. You know, we're all human. So this one is when extra deck monsters are summoned. You can bring their attack down to zero and also negate their effects. So that's extra deck. That's another solver right there. It's easy to get out with the speed roid. It's a wind monster. And if it dies, it goes into the pendulum zone. It has an interesting effect here that allows you to basically take a face-up tuner and a effect monster speed roid in my case, to resummon it from the pendulum zone if you need to. I don't really ever have to use that because, again, I usually force them down to nothing. So, this is another Synchro Crystal Wing. Had to have him just for the 3000, but it's tricky to get him out at times. You have to usually combine the rubber band, or sorry, not the rubber band, you have to combine this one with another level 5 when you change the level to get it out because you need a Synchro monster to summon him but he's decent for stopping abilities too because it says once per turn when another monster effect is activated and it's quick you can negate it and destroy it and if you do you gain the attack so and then when it battles an opponent's level five or higher monster it gains attack to the current attack of that so it's got two effects to protect you but you need a non-tuner synchro monster and a tuner so it's kind of tricky you'd have to get out like chambara or something and then one other tuner that will change its level to get this one out. But he comes in clutch when you really need him. So, high speed roid Kite Drake. I'm going to tell you something about it when I get to my Link Monster. Him, he's good for a board wipe. Or if it's a deck that's running all face up monsters and continuous spells and traps. You play him. Play his second ability. Negates all of them. And then if he dies... You can add a speed roid from your deck to your hand, so another search if he gets destroyed. Search and destroy, but another way to say it. And he also has a board wipe ability. You can only trigger one, and it's one time, one and done, but comes in clutch when you need it. This was the Stardust I was telling you about I put in there, because he's a wind. He's pretty easy to get out. You need a tuner synchro monster and a non-tuner, so again, you would need the shooter synchro monster to pull him out but it's easy to get the level seven this one's good for 
when a monster, like if they're running a deck with a bunch of special summons, you can negate one special summon. And you still get your monster back as long as they don't negate it. And then special summon it back at the end of the turn. Uh, one of the things I like is when he dies, I mean, I don't have any level 8 or lower warrior synchro monsters, but if you do do that versatility with the wind warrior monster or something that's uh, level 8, you can pull one straight from the extra deck. And you don't have to pay for it. It's an automatic summon. So this is one of my babies right here. I love my crystal clear wing synchro dragon. So once per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect, except during a damage step, and it's a quick effect, you can activate this. Basically you negate that effect and you're unaffected by all cards when they activate their effect. Then you also gain attack while negating all that stuff and protecting yourself for the turn. Then you can also stop one spell or trap effect per turn and negate it and destroy it. And if this card's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, add a wind monster from your deck. So like I said, it's backup plan with backup plan with backup plan. I'm not gonna go over Baron de Floor because almost everybody knows this card. Now, I'm responsible. He splashed in there just so I can get out one of my boss monsters a lot easier. Because you just need a tuner and a non-tuner monster that equals 10. Easy to do with speed roid. Usually use it to board wipe, you know, simple stuff. A lot of people already know how he works. And he gets one to gate. And then after that, you can... I do have him in here for this specific reason too. Because he has another effect a lot of people don't use. Which... After I've used his negate, I usually shuffle him in the deck if their board state's clear. So that I can get one card out of my deck to use against them. Because you return to the extra deck, then you special summon one level 9 or lower monster in the graveyard. See? You tell one level 9 or lower monster in your graveyard, so... It doesn't matter what it is. If it's in the graveyard, you can pull it out. And then it just goes back to the extra deck, so you can just re-summon it again as a combo. This one has won me so many duels. Not only do I love his summoning animation, and I love the fact that it reminds me of a Transformer Man, High Speed Boy, Clear Wing Rider. Don't sleep on this card, invest in it. If you can invest in two, invest in two. Just my deck is built a certain way, so I didn't put two. Plus I needed the ultra rares for other cards to do combos. This one, it's not too tricky. So now I'm gonna get to what I was telling you about. So. I usually use, if I have one of my level 7 Synchro Monsters out, what I'll do is I'll play this Speedroid Fuki Madoshi Piper, depending on how many Wind Monsters are on the field, so that I can ex excavate a card and add it to my hand. Then I will combine it with the Wind Synchro Monster to get him out. He is beautiful. No matter what you roll, you can return some of your Synchro Monsters to from your graveyard to your deck. And you can destroy cards up to the number of cards you return to your deck from the roll. And you gain 500 attack for each card destroyed. Nice way to clear a board state. And then the best part about this, after the turn ends, if you want to, I usually return the level seven synchro monster I used to get him out to the deck. At the end of the turn, when you end it, when their turn starts, you can send him back to, you can send him to the graveyard, I believe it is. Yeah, you tribute it, and you can special summon two level 7 wind synchro monsters. So, you can buy, combine that with any two level 7 wind synchro monsters. But, I have my clear wings for negating special deck, or the extra deck, and negating special effects of level 5 or higher monsters. And I usually do that because I get two boss monsters and don't have to pay for it. And it's a board wiper. So... Already went over Clear Wing Fast Dragon. Now here's my high speed word rubber band. I used to have two, but I had to kind of narrow it down to do the idea I wanted to. This Link Monster, man, when I tell you nobody ever goes after that thing to kill it first, that is the biggest mistake in a match. This has two beautiful effects. So first of all, not only can you search your deck, and make your opponent pick their fate, which just makes the victory oh so much sweeter. Because that's what I'm trying to tell you. It makes them choose, depending on... So, this is how it works. You have to, with the second effect, you have to send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, which means you can't monster reborn it, you can't do any call the grave anything to get it out. 
because it wasn't properly summoned. So remember that when you do it. The Monster Reborn does not get the monster you send with that effect out. It's got to be properly summoned. A lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players sleep on that. So basically with that second effect, what happens is you pick one of your extra decks. So strategically set up your extra deck. I set mine up because I normally send either Hagoida or I send one of my Kite Drakes to the grave. And what I usually do, I if I send my Kite Drake, my level 8, I pick one Speedwood Horse Stilts and then I will pick my Double Yo-Yo is the other one. Sometimes I pick my Fuki Madoshi if I really need to search my deck, which again, it's what my deck is built around. I usually always do stilts and yo-yo if I haven't already put them both in the graveyard. Because either way, let me get to the juicy part. Once you trigger that effect and they pick it, now you get to normal. Now here's the beautiful part. It's not a special summon of any kind. It's a normal summon. A normal summon. So that means all those cards I went over in the beginning of this tutorial of how my deck works. A normal summon. So most of these abilities will trigger if you have not used them already. Because it's a normal summon. You have to read closely with text with Speedroid so that you don't make these mistakes. It's a normal summon. And if they pick Yo-Yo, boom, that's an instant synchro summon. Because you're going to pick a tuner if you have it in the grave and haven't removed it. Or if you have excess cards in your hand. You can, when you normal summon a speed roar horse stilts, bam, you get another monster on the grave. Usually I combine it with tuners, even though you can special summon them. Usually if I have Din Din Daiko, again, I add him, like with stilts, because he can't be special summoned. He's one of the only, like, speed roar cards I can't do that with. But this card, people always underestimate. That one's nasty. If it stays on the field for multiple turns and you have extra deck to just throw away, you're set. You're set. It's that simple. But yeah, that's the tutorial of the uh, deck. So now I'm going to close it out. And I'm going to actually go into a match and rank here. And I'm going to show you how my deck works. Whether I win or lose, it's not a big deal, honestly, to me. I mainly just want to show you in action how my Speedroid deck works. There's rarely a chance where my deck completely bricks. Because I, I think I kept mine narrowed down to like, I think it was 41 cards. I added one extra card in there. Because you know, your monster spell ratio, you have to always try to keep it where, if it's a deck heavily on monsters, you want to keep it like in a 40 card, 21 or 22, and then 18 or 19. You want to try to always keep it to 40 or 45 cards, because with the new way Yu-Gi-Oh is going, Decks that have 60 cards don't do well unless it's literally a draw deck stacked to draws. Okay, so I actually got a semi-decent hand. And oh, if I didn't mention this, one thing I actually love about my Speedroid deck, doesn't matter if I go first or second, depending on how I set up the board state, I can force, if I go first, I can force out all their negates if they have them sitting there. If I go second, I already know what they're playing and know how to counter strategy it. So, as I was telling you in this scenario right here, I don't know what's going on. The server's acting up. Oh, there we go. So, really I don't want to put too much out. So we're just going to put that there. I don't know why the server's doing this right now because my internet's pristine. It's crazy that it's lagging like this. So, again, if you play him, you have to always remember, he is going to go into the extra deck if you Synchro Summon with him. So, worst case is, they're going to do what I think they're going to do, and they're going to play an Ash Blossom or a Max Seed. Oh no, they're running an Elf Blitz, so this is a perfect example of me being able to show you. What does this one do? Okay. I'm just going to let this one fly for a second here. And again, I'm not one of those players that stacks their deck with main engines of stuff. I try to be creative. I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not saying anybody's not creative, honestly. So, usually, like I told you, I will do something like... Uh, I'm not going to do my Taki Tom board. Because that would be a waste in this scenario. I'm going to pick out my Speedroid Car Turbo because 
The card I get is meant for one use and one use only right now. Just waiting for my opponent to do whatever he's trying to do. He's holding me up. Okay, so I'm going to activate my effect. Worst case is they negate it with an Ash Blossom or something. Which I can live with that because I still have a card to search my deck. And I can still get a tuner no matter what I roll. I'm going to get a tuner or something that I can use to my advantage. I just won't be able to trigger the effect. Again, just waiting on my opponent to uh, do whatever he's trying to do. Oh, it's my connection for some reason. I don't know why the servers act like this on Master Duel sometimes. It's crazy. Just when I want to just try to get through a match. The event was... Whew, the event was brutal when it first opened up. Alright, so... Let's see here. Okay, so... Luckily, I only have wind, so... Another reason why against Eldritch, I am not backed into a corner, since you can only control one attribute. This benefits me 100%, honestly. Actually, hold on, hold on, I got a better idea. No! I'll hit him twice. I'll hit him twice with my charm bar. I'm not even gonna be nice about this. So, now I've got one of my cards. I'm going to set this just in case. And now, I'm going to go in full force. And this is why I like Chambara. They really want me to use that card, too. Like, they're not even sleeping on that. See, and I like that because of this. And then I get a second attack and a power boost every time. And it's permanent. It stays. One reason I really love my Chom Bar. Gonna switch over to my main phase here. Like I said, I, that's my back to the corner card. And I never. I, the way the state is with the gates and stuff, I really never like to put quick plays down unless I absolutely have to for an emergency. Because people board wipe, and anybody who's played Master Duels knows the algorithm for Harpy's Feathers Duster is crazy. In a 40 card deck, you usually, I'd say, and see my opponent quit, because he already knew what the board stated what it was. Didn't really get to show you guys, but I will show you more on this later. But the point is, it forces them to have to think if they're going to use a negate or not. But again, my channel is Green Avenger, family friendly. This will be posted to YouTube. Possibly Facebook as well for people to look at. Uh, kind of just wanted to educate on the Speedroid or my version of the Speedroid today. And as always, I will say this with my sign off. A smile a day goes a long way. Keep that in mind. Spread the cheers and happiness to everybody. Even if it's one person at a time, you're still doing more than a lot of people are for this world by spreading that one smile a day. Alright, Green Avenger out.